started off my research initially looking at autoimmune autonomic ganglionopathy, which is an autoimmune mediated disease. And we found that by using multiple autonomic markers, we were able to find a very unique signature uh, for this disease. So we wanted to look to see if we could apply the same model of multiple autonomic biomarkers to look for ways to differentiate between another group of diseases causing, causing autonomic failure, the alpha synucleinopathies. So these are a group of diseases characterized by abnormal deposition of alpha synuclein within the central and peripheral nervous system and uh, giving rise to autonomic failure as part of these diseases. So in the early part of the illness, it might be difficult to distinguish between the different diseases, um, especially if there are slightly unusual presentations with overlap between um, the characteristics for the different diseases. So um, the main alpha synucleopathies that we see um, are pure autonomic failure, where there is um, a predominantly peripheral deposition of alpha synuclein in the nervous system, and you have isolated autonomic failure in the absence of more central features that you see in conditions like multiple system atrophy and Parkinson's disease. So, uh, like I said, in the early part of the diseases, there might be diagnostic uncertainty. So we wanted to see if using different autonomic biomarkers, we could find a way to separate them. So we looked at cardiovascular autonomic function um, using a series of different tests, quantitative pupil pupillometry, looking at uh, the pupils, and um, we took blood to look for plasma catecholamines, um, which are a marker of adrenergic denervation. Um, so what we found were that in patients with pure autonomic failure, they had much greater orthostatic hypotension. Um, when we uh, challenged them with a head up tilt test, they had much lower uh, supine noradrenaline levels and they had uh, more sympathetic pupillary deficits compared to the other groups. And when we put this into a multivariate logistic regression model, um, we were able to find that having um, a normal supine noradrenaline at initial assessment and normal pupils at initial assessment increased um, the odds of having a multiple system atrophy um, by 20 and 17 fold compared to pure autonomic failure. So they were really um, quite marked. And when we looked at the group of patients who presented with pure autonomic failure, we know by background um, from other, other natural history diseases that up to a third of them will phenoconvert to these more uh, central synucleopathies. So in that group, um, of which we had 194 patients in our data set, um, the presence of normal pupils and normal supine levels at presentation, again, was able to predict for future phenoconversion.